excited to see everybody out this morning, and there's some great contestants that we're going to have. So we are partaking in the evaluation and the humor speech contest today. And with that, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. We're going to get started, and I'm going to bring up our 2013 international contest winner and Toastmaster today, Fred Trez Vasilo. Before the World Championship of Public Speaking? No. Right here! <laughs> on this stage, practicing Saturday and Sunday for four hours each day. It takes practice. So I'd like to thank our hosts, now Township Toastmasters, not only for helping me. Out. the dignitaries in the room. And I'll start with our Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, Donna Weston. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor of Marketing, Ethel Goldie. <laughs> our District Logistics Chair, Don Williams.
Contestant number four, Anne Peklo. Anne Peklo, contestant number four. Our final contestant, contestant number five, Israel Velasquez. Israel Velasquez, contestant number five. In order for our evaluation contestants to compete, we need someone to speak for them. Len Stein, Toastmasters of the Future. Toastmasters of the Future, Len Stein. connection with each other. 
not to live in fear of the TTF Twitter task force digitally <laughs> looking over your shoulder to make sure you have sent the required number of tweets per day. <laughs> hashtag Vicky likes her new virtual clothing. Or hashtag Johnny likes his replenishment capsules with fries. <laughs> I say hashtag set me free. So you, the, the vocal cords fled, went underground to a desolate land far, far away, hoping not to be found, to build a new, to see that District 30 remains strong and viable, <laughs> and you took us, the SHBs, with you to old Detroit, where you created housing, jobs, vibrant communities, and named street signs after past District 30 dignitaries. <laughs> I am proud to say I live at the corner of Donna Weston Way and Epical Table of Art. I spent hours admiring the holographic statue of the supremely ultimate vocal cord that sits in the center of our town square. And that, my friends, is how I was changed by a tire. Thank you. <laughs> You gave us the heart of a Toastmaster. You told us to pause for 5.223456 seconds, but for dramatic, for dramatic effect. You told us you removed all the ums and ahs from our digital vocabulary. You told us how to breathe when speaking. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> you limited our verbal engagements with each other to 4.500 and 7.500 minutes. And then you had five indi human individuals following us around, giving us unlimited praise. <laughs> oh, what a utopia that is. Mm, utopia, good word of the day. <laughs> but no matter how illegal it may be, you still stress the importance of eye contact. <laughs> No matter how blasphemous it may be, you still believe in the warmth and importance of a smile. <laughs> and no, that no emoticon face can ever take the place of body language. My vocal variety is still in development. <laughs> but you gave us hope. You gave us a purpose in life. You gave us Excuse me, I'm getting a message on my Google 6.0 eyeballs. <laughs> the EP and the TTF have found our hidden city. They have vaporized our statue. They have destroyed our street signs. Abort remainder of planned speech. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, guest VCs, and yes, synthetic humans like me, we must decide how we want to handle this course of action. Do we succumb to the will of this of this of this do we <laughs> succumb to the will of the silence? S succumb, mm, good good word of choice for, for word of the day. Or do we fight to remain strong for the right to speak? I for one have already made my decision. Thank you.
About a year and a half now. Started July 2012. Well, what number are you representing? Alto. 897-901. What is your highest educational level? I'm, well, I'm currently going for my CC. I've got a few more speeches to go. Oh. And I'm currently an officer in our club, VP of PI, mm -hmm. which is a 24-7 job. I've always been learning it. <laughs> now, I see you're an industrial engineer. Yes. Do you design synthetic machines? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not. I work with... <laughs> we, I work for AI Hewitt Corporation, and we're currently putting in place the various uh, health and welfare plans to uh, define uh, pen, uh, pensions, contributions that companies have outsourced. And we get involved with the staffing models for that. Excellent. Excellent. So how are your tools, smart skills that you're developing applied in your job? That looks good on my resume. I'm <laughs> <laughs> having, fun, having fun at the company, meeting people, networking, seeing what, you know, the ANQ is a good company to work for. They're very open for their people. Now, you love creative writing. Tell us more where this hobby came from. Just like it's something I like to do in my spare time. I've written for different shows that have been in the city, different fundraising benefits, for also for parties, for events, for people that I know, short stories, skits, songs, that type of thing. Interesting. And what influenced you to create this piece? The Supreme Alchemist. <laughs> I'm thinking about the future. I want to do a little satire on Toastmasters and taking a look at the future, how Toastmasters relates to the changing telecommunications aspect of society and life. As a matter of fact, this month's magazine, I happen to see this Thursday, is about how communications is changing in terms of Toastmasters. And I see you've been a vice uh, president of public relations yes. for your club. Yes. How do you like that experience? So far it's good. I mean, we're trying to put together different events with different clubs within AI and promoting it to people on the outside, getting them involved in this, seeing the worthwhile benefits <laughs> that one could have by joining Toastmasters. And I see you love the stock market. It's another interest of yours. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to see where this thing is going. Uh, it's kind of exciting. It's a uh, little hobby. You can make something on it. <laughs> How do you feel today delivering your speech? How is the feeling of being the target speaker? Well, I'm not in Vegas, but I'm here at Morton Gold Library. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little, you know, it's a little bit, you know, uh, intimidating, but just getting out and doing it. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Toastmasters of the Future, what inspired that title? Well, I, like I said, I was thinking of different communication aspects, how communication is changing, how we're changing as a general population, how Toastmasters fits in, how we have to maintain, we maintain current with what's going on, and yet still developing our skills as people, connecting one another with one of each other as a person, as opposed to a PDA. I never text, I don't send tweets, I don't text, I don't know. <laughs> So you've been in Chicago your whole life? Yes, Chicago, my neighborhood. Yes. What do you like most about Chicago? It's a vibrant city. It has a lot here. There's a lot to do. There's a lot of culture. There's a lot of different uh, activities. One of the best cities to live in the United States. Excellent. Excellent. So tell us more about any future ideas for speeches. Are you going to carry this theme throughout and create eventually a keynote? 2014 Kuala Lumpur! <laughs> We're going to go back to back! <laughs> do you plan on uh, continuing in the leadership track? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And what's the next step there? Well, after getting my CC, I'd probably go to, there's a competent leader, as long as I believe it is, working with that. And then, you know, take them one thing at a time, see where that leads me. And which uh, speech project was this speech today? Probably speech number seven, six or seven. <laughs> see the vocal variety there. <laughs> <laughs> where do you get your ideas for your speeches? Well, like I said, when I took a look at uh, what's the, how society is going, articles that you read, something to do. I try to do something original that hopefully no one has done before come up with an idea, creating a character. Like I say, it's a satire on Toastmasters and also a look at the future, too, as to where things are headed. Excellent. Excellent. Do you plan on exploring your personal stories? I've done some in the past, yes, and I would continue doing that in the future, sure, too. Excellent. What uh, would you share with the audience today? One tip 
that has helped you tremendously in your speaking career so far? Probably don't be afraid, just like the Nike ad, yeah, just do it. Get up here, think about it, be somewhat confident anyway, as much as you can be, <laughs> and go up here, create something, create a new idea, and share it with your fellow Toastmasters. Very good. It's all about create and test, create and test. And when you have fun and you're creative, the audience can feel that definitely. <coughs> well, I would like to uh, present you with a small, small token from our division. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much for being <coughs> the target speaker today. Okay, just to let everybody know that this contest will be videotaped and will be available on YouTube. If you're a contestant, please email me or your division governor. I'll put up some links to the contest for your reference only until the thing. The entire, all the division contests will be released publicly on YouTube after the last division con contest commences. And thank you very much, Prez.
Free speech definitely made me think. I really wondered, what is the future of Toastmasters technology? Contestant number two, Sabil Ahmed. Sabil Ahmed, <coughs> contestant number two. When you speak, you sell. And what a wonderful way for Ben Stein to sell us the idea about how technology is moving us, moving us apart from each other, even though it's connecting us information-wise. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and distinguished guest, in the very opening of the speech, it was very interesting as the way that he walked from there and came up here, I was thinking, what is he doing? Is he, did he have too much at night last night? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very unique way to open a presentation. The way that a person comes up on the stage, the way that he stands or she stands. So that made all of us in tune to him to see what is he going to do next? What is he going to say next? When it comes to the contents of his presentation, it was also unique. The whole time he acted as a robot, as an android, oh sorry, as a synthetic human. <laughs> so that was very wonderful. It is a very humorous way to let us know that let go of the technology, come shake hands and be humans. So that's a very unique way for, uh, to convey that message. Number three, very, very important, the delivery aspect. The delivery was good. Oh, I'm, I'm, imagine, I'm imagining that it may have taken Ben Stein many, many hours to practice, even though it appeared sometimes that he lost some words. But overall, it took a lot of time to practice what he did. So we have to give him a hand. And all the time I was thinking, you know, Get the evaluation contest, let him have over here as one of the humorous contestants. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good, wonderful. As far as the closing goes, it was a very good closing. It was a good closing. I like the fact that, yes, he came over here and uh, in a very humorous way he closed and then he said, Mr. Toastmaster. The things that I would like or desire in him so he could become an awesome speaker if he's giving the speech. The same thing next time is, as he's doing his contents, it's very important that have much more robotic movement, right? Yes, you did some robotic movement, but make it more dramatized. Use up more of the stage if possible, number one. Number two, as far as the eye contact goes, you are looking most of the time to the people in the middle and one time over here, and just one tiny time over here, as you were smiling. <laughs> but I was thinking, come on, Ben, look, look at me too, I'm also part of your audience. <laughs> so that's one small way that you could improve. In the closing aspect, it's very, very important that it should be some action items, some to-do list. 
So yeah, even though your closing was good, it should have been more impactful, more powerful. You could have said something like this. That my dear humans, a message for you is, let go of the Facebook and take up the human book, the human touch. Let go of the Twitter and shake hands with people much more. Let go of the texting and uh, converse with people more. Overall, it was a wonderful presentation. Good job. A minute of silence, please. Contestant number three, <coughs> Romeo Jimeno. Romeo Jimeno, contestant number three. Good evening. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters, guests, especially our target speaker, Glenn. Congratulations on an outstanding speech. What made it work is a lot of humor, so you obviously had that. Now, like all of us Toastmasters, we want to take our speech skills to the next level, a, great, a greater mastery of speaking skills. So allow me to engage you on two important areas. Your areas of strength and your areas for enhancement. First, strengths, because strengths are going to be your foundation towards reaching this higher level of mastery. Your strengths are number one, great sense of humor. You obviously uh, have this, this, this natural skill in you, and humor is always important in, in, in public speaking. So, so I want you to build on that humor. Secondly, you grab attention right <coughs> at the beginning. Even before you walked up the stage, you already were making those robotic steps and movements with your hands and your feet. Great attention grabbing uh, opening of the speech. Lastly, I thought you did maximize a lot of your hand gestures, your body gestures, which is always important in any speech. So you did exhibit very effective body and hand gestures. Now, if you were to repeat the speech in the future, what could you do to make it even better? What could you enhance? I've got a couple of suggestions. Number one, gestures. Uh, when, when you were doing this, the hands were basically moving up and down, right? I would suggest maybe making it more robotic. Usually, a robot would probably start stop in the middle, right, rather than going right off like this one. I saw that at uh, Michigan Avenue, so I. I, I <laughs> 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 also, dialogue. You had a short dialogue here. It was probably like maybe 20 seconds. I would suggest that you maximize the dialogue and maybe use vocal contrast between one character and the other character. The other character, deep voice, the other character could have a shrill voice, maximize the dialogue. Third, I want you to maximize the stage, as press would always suggest. Maximize the stage, maybe have one scenario to your left, one in the middle, one to your right, past, present, and the future. Work the stage, I noticed that you stayed primarily here in the middle. So with, with, boy, uh, with staging, and with apportioning certain parts of the speech to certain events in, 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 in the life of the world, past, present, and future, then you could maximize the whole stage. I would also recommend that you close 
by a powerful, memorable summary of the points you just made in the speech. You ended abruptly without summarizing the points. So uh, a strong close would have accentuated the points that you were making. Lastly, I would recommend too that that you use more of the feet movement because the, your gestures are important. So in summary, great creative flair, great humor, great gestures. Recommend using more of the stage, using more robotic gestures, more dialogue, and more staging. Thank you very much. Uh, Contestant number four, Anne Peklo. Anne Peklo, contestant number four.
is even though your pauses when you lost track were brilliant, pulling those in to the actual speech, I would like you to pause more so that our laughter would be more effective. I would like your pace to be a little slower so that we could catch up with the brilliant Ill imagery that you brought to us. But I do want to thank you, Lynn, for this experience, and I truly think I'm going to have some sleepless nights. <laughs> <laughs> Contestant number five, Israel Velasquez. Israel Velasquez, contestant number five. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster, fellow members, and guests and especially Len Stein. How dare you try to upstage the humorous speech contestants? <laughs> <laughs> From the moment you started to the moment you finished, we were thoroughly entertained. Today I brought my nine-year-old triplets and I was concerned that they would be bored today. I looked over at them and I saw them yawn only one time. <laughs> you are a dynamic speaker. You own the stage. You became the character. I believe that from the moment you started to walk on stage to the moment that you ended. Good delivery, good pauses, good jokes, humor was all over the place. You are a seasoned speaker. And you made it very difficult for me to say, hmm, he needs an opportunity for improvement. Where is that? Give it to me. And then you gave it to me. <laughs> As a robot. They stuttered. You should have taken advantage of that when you did stutter. And when you did, you brought attention to yourself because you laughed at yourself. As a seasoned speaker, you know better. Take advantage of that situation. The other thing that I noticed as an opportunity for improvement for you is that although you became the character, you seem winded. You seem to be gasping for air because you were trying to get those points across very succinctly, very timely with the jokes. And I saw you pause sometimes when it shouldn't need it to be paused. You're going to hear a lot of feedback today. Some of it you can definitely apply. And some of it you're going to say, thank you, but no thanks, Israel. I did a speech one time, and my friend says, Israel, you got to sell it, baby. I said, what do you mean? He said, yeah, when you do the voice of a female in the body movement, you got to give it a little shimmy shake, baby. <laughs> I said, whoa, I only do that on Saturday night. <laughs> For you, I don't think you have that problem. You're very comfortable. You can become the character. You feel very in tune with where you're at. You are a fantastic speaker. What are you doing this afternoon? My kids. For you to be entertained. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster.
please remain silent until all the ballots have been collected. Mr. Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaking of evaluations, it was brought to my attention that there is an upcoming evaluation workshop led by Matthew Fox, and it will take place on Sunday, October 27th, between 3 and 6 p.m. at Westminster Place Toastmasters. Cleo Scott, would you please stand up and identify yourself? Cleo please Scott. see Cleo with any questions about that. Thank you, Cleo. <laughs> at this time, we will hear an exciting announcement from our Lieutenant Governor of Training and Education, Donna Weston.
2002 world champion of public speaking. His name is Dwayne Smith. He's going to be speaking at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, 7 a.m. There's no traffic at Saturday morning. 7 a.m. Everyone that's earned an educational award gets a free hot breakfast. Why wouldn't you want to come? Next, the banner parade at 8 a.m. So if anybody's competed before, get a few of your members up there. 15 second skit. You can do that. You write five to seven minute speeches. What do you get? What does the winner get? A, a, a registration for the next conference, right? You, come, you have to come to the spring conference for free. It's not going to cost you $99 for all those people you're bringing. Free. 9 a.m. The evaluation contest. 10.30, we have our business meeting. And for those of you that don't need to attend, of course it's a great meeting, we have two great seminars. We have Ellen Schnurr with Improve with Improv, another way to improve your presentation skills. And right after her, we have Prez, our world champion. <laughs> per person or per club? For the entire club, $99, everybody in the club, and you can bring guests. Now, as I said, meals are extra, but to come the entire day for all those activities. After October 25th, it goes up to 109, and then I think the 119 toward the, toward the last few days. So see me. Let's take a 10 minute break and we'll reconvene for the humorous speech conference. 